reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and, pre and presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and the presbyters, and they reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates of Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Good morning, Wednesday, the middle of the week, and John says this. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit and every one that does, he prunes it so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you, just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine. So neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire. They will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. But this is my Father glorified. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> what an incredible gospel. Always one of the favorites. I am the vine. You are the branches. You can bear much fruit because you have already been pruned. By that, Jesus is saying, and this follows on Monday and Tuesday, the word of God is within us, and that's what prunes us because we know we're supposed to live by charity and by love and by forgiveness and by peace, all of which we've heard this week, and that we do not live by anger and jealousy and, and unforgiveness and, and all the rest of that. That's the stuff that gets pruned away if you truly love Christ. And then it becomes so close, it doesn't get better than that. I am the vine and you are the branches. All of us hopefully know what that means because every year come spring, especially if you live around here, you gotta go out and start pruning to make all the shrubs, all the vines and the garden and everything else, you gotta make it look beautiful. You gotta kinda, you gotta kinda trim it up and sculpt it and make it really a thing of beauty, this wonderful natural world that God gives us. So my friends, think about that. We are already pruned. Um, we are the branches connected um, to the vine, which is Christ himself in turn connected to God the Father. Think about that. Remain in me as I remain in you. It doesn't get more clear. What an Easter message. I love the message this week that we're hearing about living the word. The word dwells within us. The word, if you will, is almost like the fertilizer in our lives that keeps us going. And as I said yesterday, we prune away all the bad stuff. What remains is the pure love that God gives us in and through Jesus Christ. Take care, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow.
And now, my friends, as we have shared the Word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. Friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says, or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs> 